Hello, my name is Fred David. I'm a professor of management at Francis Marion University in Florence, South Carolina. Thank you for being here today. Co-author and I have developed a series of short five-minute videos to highlight various topics in our strategic management textbook. The topic for today is projected financial statement analysis. It's an important strategic management topic because generally students are asked in this course to develop a three-year strategic plan for some assigned case company. And it's important that the students provide guidance going forward as to whether how their proposed plan is feasible, financially doable. So chapter eight goes through the steps in necessary in developing projected statements. You know, it's just basic business to be able to, de to develop projected financial statements. Even for a small business requesting a commercial loan, a, a banker is going to ask for projected statements to see if, if the business is going to be able to pay the bank back. So let's look at this, the, the key steps. To begin with, as described in, in Chapter 8, you're going to want to begin with the income statement. And obviously the first line there are revenues. So rather than using a historical set percentage, Students need on that revenue projection to incorporate what they're recommending. I mean, that revenue line could double if, as a part of your proposed strategic plan, you were acquiring a rival firm, let's say, that would, would close to double the revenues. So there's, there's a need not to blindly use the historical percentages in developing projected statements. So as you move down the income statement, you, you're going to come to taxes probably going to use the prior tax rate. Uh, that would be taxes divided by net income before taxes, some percentage. Use that g going forward. Uh, the, the business, the expenses, cost of goods sold, and other items on the income statement. You're going to ask yourself, has our projected strategic plan going to impact these various items? And if so, make adjustments appropriately. For example, on cost of goods sold, if you were acquiring a supplier, probably could therefore lower cost of goods sold on materials. You maybe could lower that percentage. But at the end of the day on the income statement, you're going to have a net, a net income. Now, the key link in doing projected financial statement analysis is going to be to bring that net income over to the balance sheet down at the retained earnings. You realize the retained earnings row on the bottom of a balance sheet is a cumulative number that reveals earnings over historically the firm has made. Each year the firm adds the net income, the net income less dividends. Bring that over to, to the balance sheet. And the way it's described in Chapter 8, our finance friends uh, do, we're going to work from the bottom of the balance sheet back to the top. This is all described there in, in Chapter 8, an important concept for, for students. So as you move up from the bottom of the balance sheet back towards the top, you're going to come to items like additional paid in capital. Another name for that is capital surplus. And you're going to ask yourself, gosh, how, do, how much do we change that? And, and the answer is, well, on your EPS EBIT analysis, were you suggesting the firm use debt or equity? If, if equity, you're going to go up on that additional paid in capital road. A similar thing for the long-term debt account, also low on the balance sheet. Asking yourself, how much do we change this, if at all? Or do we decrease it or increase it? Answer, what, what are your recommendations uh, suggesting in terms of your EPS EBIT analysis? How much new capital was going to be required and what were you going to be recommending as the best means uh, to, to raise that capital, debt versus equity? So moving, continuing to move on, 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 up, the, on up the balance sheet there, you, you're going to have your liabilities. Ultimately, you're going to get a total liabilities uh, and, and equity. Move, move that up to, uh, to your total assets and continue to move forward up to cash. Cash being the, being the plug figure we're going to use. So, so in the asset account, uh, asset rows, one, one would be property, plant, and equipment. So again, you, you'll ask yourself, well, going forward for the next three years, how should we change this property, plant, and equipment row? Answer, take a look at your recommendations and see where you're adding stores or building new manufacturing facilities and what would be the expected impact on, on the property, plant, and equipment row, given what you're recommending. I'm saying rather than using a historical percentage. Thank, thank you for being here today. I uh, hope you enjoy and studying Chapter 8. We'll see you next time on the next segment.